this record is about creditworthiness. Uh, all right, let's write down the title. Credit. Creditworthiness. What are the, um, the most common uh, sources of income that uh, you may have? The first one is going to be contract of employment. Of employment. For indefinite, in, indefinite uh, period of time. Second, less common but still existing is a contract of employment. Employment for specified period. And the third one, uh, quite rare but also existing, is a contract uh, of mandate. What does it mean? It's, uh, for example, if they have a contract with you that each month they're gonna pay you X amount of money per month, but just the contract uh, for kind of like from month to month, like for the project. Students are employed this way, uh, programmers, they can be employed this way. Sometimes it, uh, it exists on the market in some cases. Then, uh, rental income. Then can be uh, retirement, retirement slash um, disability um, let me check it this disability pension yes and what else we can have on business so self-employment it's very common self employment it's in the brackets uh, own business and then can be um, limited company LTD company I can extend more later so shortly about all of them the most common one is um, contract of employment for indefinite period. Let's say you're employed in a big corporation and you have just indefinite, uh, indefinite period of your contract. Then we're just gonna look backwards uh, only three months back there uh, and we're gonna take arithmetical, uh, arithmetical average for last three months. There is some exceptions that sometimes we can have 12 if it's better because you had some bonuses, some additions, but let's say in general we're gonna calculate three months backwards. Um, then if you have a contract of employment for a specified period of time then it's more complicated because first of all it usually has to be still valid for 12 months in advance it's not only for mm, one two months in maybe one or two banks right now we can prove for six months in advance but usually they're going to require even 12 months in advance and back there it's uh it's you are obligated to have it mm, uh, for at least six months you be you need to be employed at least you need to have like uh, history of employment even if you, if you uh, changed uh, the job to, to, to someone else uh, to a different company and we're gonna take also as well like on the first one the free last months but you you need to be employed for at least six months backwards that's the, that's the difference uh, contract of mandate as I said if you're a student or you're a programmer you just like from month to month you make the project we're gonna take six or even 12 months back there very usually it's like you need to prove that you are employed somewhere for 12 plus months and there is no gaps longer than 60 days between uh, the, the transfer uh, money on the, of the salary on your account but we gonna rather take uh, we're gonna rather take uh, six last, uh, six last months 
it really vary on the back, let's say 12 at least historical uh, back there months. Rental income, it's a very broad topic, uh, but you may have as an investor here down in Poland some real estate that you're just having profit of, um, of renting them. So then we need to prove the PIT uh, statement, the annual uh, tax statement that um, shows that you have uh, official income from them. We need to copy your, um, uh, your contract with your, um, uh, the, the people, right, that they are renting from you. And uh, what else? We need to look 12 months back there. In some of the banks, we have an exception that six uh, months backwards, it's, it's still right. Uh, how we calculate is a different story, but I'm just saying in general, how long you need to keep this, uh, this specific uh, source of income and how we're gonna calculate from, from, uh, from which months backwards. And then later on, I'm gonna tell you like uh, how we calculate that, how we, how we really put it to the online calculator of the bank. Uh, retirement disability pension, if it's like permanent, then we can, because retirement is permanent and disability pension, not always. So if they are permanent, most of the bank, the majority of the banks, they're gonna accept that as your uh, salary. Uh, we have a cases, for example, of military pilots who are 40 years old and they, they, they already have a retirement, plus, for example, self-employment if they still uh, fly for right now commercial airlines. So uh, it's doable to combine them. You can combine, actually, you can mix all of them, whatever is your situation. So here we have self-employment. It's just like your own business, your own small company. Of course, you can have employees but you just have one small business it's not limited company yet so if you have that one you have to run it for at least 12 months backwards and in some of the banks right now they require you to to have it for at least two years it's quite a lot because first of all it has to run for as i said one or two years backwards and moreover you have to show the profit you need to prove that you are not on the loose below below the zero right that you really gain the profit uh, and from that, we're going to calculate uh, almost the same credit for like from the contract of employment. We're going to have an average. So we always going to take as a foundation of the own self-employment business as a closed year. For example, last closed year on this tax, um, um, tax PIT declaration, plus the um, uprising the um, month by month of the CAPE AR, it's really hard to translate it to English, but there is something called KPIR, just a statement like month by month uh, of the revenue minus cost gives the gross income. So the gross income uh, is gonna be uh, calculated with the tax. You can have 17 or slash 32 progressive tax or flat 19 linear tax. Of course, the video may be not so up to date with the uh, further months or years, but right now we have this rule that you can have a uh, general taxation rules or the flat one, linear, no matter how is your uh, monthly incomes. And with the limited company, I put it here, it's um, quite rare with um, you know, foreigners in Poland, but you still can have a limited company or you can be a shareholder in a limited company. And from that, you can have a multiply uh, options of taking the, the salary, the, the, the income to your, to your pocket. You can have parallelly self-employment and you can just put the invoice from self-employment to the limited company and that's gonna be actually everything calculated from the self-employment. You can have a contract of employment as a CEO, for example, as a president of the company or the board member. You can have an even different one. It's called in Polish Mianowanie. So you can be uh, just like a mm, uh, president of the company and then you have a normal salary from that without the insurance, whatever, just like multiply options. But making the long story short, we still can have this revenue from that, this, uh, um, your, your income, but it's gonna be more complicated. And moreover, if you have more than 51% of the, uh, shares, you have the majority, uh, so more than 50, then um, we're gonna also ask you about the, um, the papers, the financial papers, the statements from the limited company to check the condition, how, how good or bad uh, is the situation inside the company. 
Good, let's move forward. Uh, then the currency. The currency, as you remember from the previous videos, can be PLN or GBP, Euro, USD. We, we do not provide Swiss franc anymore. If majority, there's a one simple rule of uh, financial supervision committee, you remember this KNF institution, KNF, they say the majority of your um, whole incomes, not even your, but your and your partner, all the all household, all people together who are taking the mortgage, then uh, you need to calculate what is the main, um, how to say it, like, yeah, the, the, the majority of the, of the incomes. If we're going to calculate that you have some income from France in Euro and then combining with your uh, partner uh, salary in Poland, you still your majority is in Euro, then you're obligated, you are, you are forced to take credit in Euro. Not all of the banks are giving the uh, credit in currency, in foreign currency. It's going to be way more expensive right now, but it's still doable. There is one exception though. You can combine do, those, those incomes. For example, we have a mixed couple. You are foreigner and you are Polish uh, citizen. One income is in Poland, one income is abroad. No matter where, until we speak about those three currencies, even if two banks right now, even if, if you have Japanese currency, yen, then we can still uh, uh, do it. So we downsize your salary from, uh, from abroad, no matter what is that. Uh, to the Polish one and we minus 20%. Then we combine them and we kind of virtually have uh, the new uh, income, which is gonna be um, credit, like, like the, the credit, the mortgage is gonna be launched here in PLN, but some of the bank, they're gonna accept this combination. Um, so let's come back to the, to the currency. So as you remember, the majority of this calculation of the, of the currency that you're gonna have is gonna tell us in which currency we can apply for the mortgage. Then, very important two rules. The, that's the currency of income. And then, um, country uh, of, let's say country of income. It's about where are you employed. If you're employed in uh, Norway, UK, wherever, then if you're a foreigner, we may face some issues with the salary because if your salary goes to different foreigner account, we are gonna face some, uh, some issues here. Uh, so those two things when you're a foreigner are very, very important in order to, if, to just judge, to say that you're, you're ready to go for the next steps, to like the video one, to check all your story, credit for estate, or we stuck somewhere here on the basic regulations. Um, there is almost always a way to, to combine your different um, sources of income. For example, when you have rental uh, income, some of the banks are not gonna accept that until they're um, only one, like a main uh, source of income. But when you have, for example, two or three of them, it's very, very flexible. Keep it in mind. Um, what else with the, with the query for openness? Uh, DTI, let's recall this one. Uh, Debts to incomes. Should be equal or lower than 50%. So, in other words, as you remember, if from all these calculations, your income is 10K net after the tax, all deductions, and take it from the calculators, bank calculators, your debt shouldn't be higher, your monthly installment shouldn't be higher than 50% of what we calculated here. Sometimes you have an income abroad, for example, in US, and it's way higher than the Polish one, but if we cannot take it because the bank is not accepting the source of, it, that's the, for example, the currency that, that we in this particular bank cannot take, cannot use, then we just not calculate. And even though your salary is 20 times higher abroad, we just cannot calculate it here. So on the denominator, we're gonna have only the Polish currency uh, or combined with the different currencies. As I said, it's very complicated. I just want you to have like very general, um, how to say it, like 
um, look on that, you know, like a, a few basic thoughts in order to ask us way, way more questions and calculate everything in the meeting. To sum up everything, in most of the cases, you're gonna have contract of employment. It doesn't matter which one. You remember, we just calculate the average from the last three months, uh, but sometimes you just need to have it valid for uh, one year in, in advance ahead. Uh, rental income, it's still acceptable, but not in every bank. If you have uh, self-employment, it's doable, but you need to run this business for at least 12 months, sometimes 12, 24 months. If you are CEO, uh, owner or board member of the limited company, it's still doable. And the rest is just the really, uh, really rare, uh, like almost exceptions. So the currency is very important. PLN, it's available in all of the Polish banks. Those three foreign currencies, they are uh, only available right now, currently in two banks. There is like a lot of things that you need to um, provide do proof to, to get them. Sometimes it's better, as I said, to downsize your salary in different currency. If you have the second income in PLN, sometimes it's way better to just combine them and, and go still for the cheaper PLN Polish uh, mortgage. Uh, DTI, you remember, country of income is also critical. If your country of income is abroad, it's not the Polish employer. I mean, it can be a um, worldwide corporation, but the salary should go from at least the Polish branch of it or for the Polish account. Uh, good, we went through all of it. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next one.